Alrighty, do your thing, wolves. Do you want an endearing fact about fictional wolves? You do. Um, not real wolves, but fictional ones. Um, so if you ever watch the, um, well, okay, so some of you may or may not know, I have a website, AnnaMardoll.com, and I talk at great length about books and literature and, and themes of books on there. Um, specifically, one of the books that I've been going through, one of the series I've been going through for forever has been the Narnia series. I've spent like seven years going through it page by page and talking about themes and stuff and just generally bagging on C.S. Lewis. And um, one of the things that I did as part of this is at the end of the books, I would watch the, the movies, um, the American uh, movies that, that they made for Narnia. And um, I stumbled across this incredibly cute fact that the wolves in... Uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe in the movie, um, all their tails had to be CGI'd with, you know, computer-generated graphics um, because the actual onset of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Models. The actual onset models for the, for the wolves in the movie um, were dogs. And the dogs kept wagging their tails happily because look at all the nice people. They love the people. <laughs> so uh, all the wolf tails in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe had to be CGI'd to not be happily wagging. Um, and I just find that fact so happy and charming. And it makes me smile whenever I'm sad. So good morning. <laughs> Welcome to another Let's Play. This is Quest for Glory 4. My name is Anna Mardall. And um, when we last left off, we, uh, we'd given the gnome his sense of humor back. Although I think it's arguable whether he's actually good at his humor or not. But, um, but at least he's not as bad as he was, <laughs> which is really all you can ask for. And, um... Before you blow, Joe, I figure I owe you one. I'm gonna let you in on a secret only we gnomes know. I'm gonna tell you the ultimate joke. The what? Don't wince, Vince. This is straight, mate. You tell this one, and whoever hears it is gonna laugh. Really laugh. Can't help it, can't stop it kind of laugh. Only works once, and should only be used in last resorts, Mort. It's the last laugh, so to speak. The best jest to the West. Yours for the telling. The gnome tells you a rather silly joke. You find yourself laughing despite yourself. See what I mean, Jane? Tell this joke to a big bad dude that's out to do you in, then exit while he's laughing. Use it or lose it. Bye bye, birdie! <laughs> okay. Um, that was really sweet of him. And and we've helped him. We did a good deed. Um, what are our stats looking like? This is kind of an unusual let's play for me because normally I'm obsessively checking my stats and um you know, making sure that they're all being built up to a hundred. Um, so this is actually not very on brand for me at all, that I mostly haven't looked at them. And I think it's, um, I think it's a testament partly as to how engrossing this game is that I'm way more interested in doing things than in focusing on my stats, which is very unusual for me. Um, but also to a certain extent, because this game feels like the end of the series, it makes more sense to me to, you know, you spent all this time building up to be a big bad hero, and now you get to go around and be a big bad hero, and you don't need to obsessively up all your stats. <coughs> Which is good, because I'm not sure how we would do it. Um, 
I we we haven't found anything that ups our agility, which is hmm. I don't even know what I, where I would start with that. Um, the uh, exercise machine upped our strength, but not our vitality, which was kind of weird. I expected it to do both. Um, our magic has gone up basically because we use that when we fight. Our communication score really can't go up easily. There's no barter function at all. So I'm assuming that the only thing affecting that is when we say things like greet and goodbye and tell about yourself and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe we could spam it that way. Just hold down the, <laughs> hold down the enter key and keep greeting somebody. Um, weapon use, despite the fact that we've had to use our dagger several times in combat, is, has only gone up three points. I don't even know how to parry and dodge in the god-awful combat system that they've stuck us with. Um, stealth has gone up because I stealth around the forest a bit. Um, I don't know that you can pick up rocks and throw them here, so I don't know of a way to up that. Um, climbing is the one thing that is no longer totally neglected. We've gotten points for uh, climbing the uh, town wall to get in and out during uh, during at night. And then our honor has gone up, probably mostly because of our in-game actions like saving Davy and saving Igor and reuniting Anna and Nikolai. I don't think um, I don't think anything else controls honor. We helped the Dumble Boy. That was probably honorable. Um, it's midday. Listen. Let's go in the Burgermeister's office and see if there's anything new to talk about with him. I don't think there is. Nikolai, the old man, is dead. He wandered out of town yesterday, and I only found his tattered remains. It will be missed. Okay, so he, the Dimitri did find his body. That's really sad, but... Ah, good day. So she has been looking for Nikolai all this time, just as he was looking for her. I guess they must truly love one another. I hope they will be happy in the afterlife. I hope so too. Anything new to talk about topic-wise? I don't think so. Everyone here will miss Nikolai. It is a very sad occasion. Oh, okay, this is different. I used to take care of Nikolai. Make sure he was safe at home, eating food, getting rest, that sort of thing. It's going to feel very strange to know he's not around anymore. Nikolai used to take me fishing at the lake when I was young. He was like an older brother to me. Anna was a sweet woman who really loved him. They were very happy together. Mm. Mm. Oh. Goodbye. And try not to run into any more ghosts, please. We'll do our best. Okay, so one of the things I was super excited about was we get to go see the Lishi now and um, answer his Baba Yaga riddle. Um, he wouldn't he wouldn't accept our answer before because we hadn't technically met with her. We just met with the door guard, which seems kind of silly. But <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm fighting another not a cold, but Sniffles? Maybe it's allergies. It's cold here. Like, like, physically cold. <laughs> it's been in the 30s outside. Which is cold for Texas. 30s Fahrenheit. Which is cold for, for, for me in Texas. I know some of you guys live in like Canada and, and North America and are like, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a heat wave. <laughs> but we're wimps. Or at least I am. 10 and 12 make 22. This killer plant will crawl to you. 
Oh. Hungry, hunting, seeking food. A berry bush with an attitude? I thought he didn't take our Baba Yaga answer. But we know this one. Elderberry bush. Riddles, riddles, three, two, one. Next one, and my riddling's done. Well, what's the last riddle then? Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Oops! Hi there! Hi. Nine and eight make seventeen. Watch out for the fairy queen. Blocked by magic, pale of cheek. What is it that the fairies seek? We don't know. But that would explain who the strange woman was who uh, knocked us out with a fountain. You come up with a wild guess. That would be a killer rabbit. Fuzzy bunny, soft and furry. That's a really crazy guess. Find the answer in a hurry if you want to have success. Okay. <laughs> you say goodbye to the creature. But here only a faint <coughs> giggle in reply. So we don't know the answer. But maybe if we go out at night again, we might. I do not think there is anything else to do during the day right now. Um, normally I would go get us a uh, reading but uh, the uh, readings are all coming up void cards. So, which is in itself pretty dang ominous. And I'm not sure how that works either because she presumably doesn't have a deck full of void cards. Um, so, uh, is it After some overwriting her real cards, or what the hell is going After on? The void card is not a tarot card that was added for this game. After uh, which makes sense that you would have one. I mean, it's a important influence in the area. So, um, but I didn't want anyone to run out to buy tarot cards and be like, where the hell is my void card? There is no void card. Knock on the You door. hear movement on the other side of the door. After a few minutes, you hear someone removing the bar and unlocking the bolts on the other side of the door. Chris, I can't see that screen. You're in the way. So you're back! No, oh, it's your front. We're take gonna get seat. another. No, take two. They're small. I got a joke just for you, so don't look so sheepish. So we will sit down. I guess we're gonna get another. Uh... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and all you others. I'd like to say how glad I am to be here. I'd like to say it. Seriously, folks, staying at the Hotel Mordavia has been like staying at a resort. A last resort. My room is so small, the mice are hunchbacked. I couldn't even complain about the room service. There wasn't any to complain about. And the innkeeper's wife really went out of her way to make me feel at home. She ignored me completely. <laughs> I wasn't feeling well, so I went out to visit the local doctor. You know, Dr. Cranium. He's the guy with the three pairs of glasses, one for nearsightedness, one for farsightedness, and one to look for the other two. I said to the doctor, my heart keeps making a strange noise. It keeps going tick, tick, tick. Aha, said Dr. Cranium. 
We have ways of making you talk. Next, I went to visit the local store. If you don't know what's up, then you haven't seen their prices lately. And the shopkeeper, what a gossip. She suffers from acute indiscretion. I dislike repeating gossip, but uh, what else can you do with it? And boy, oh boy, the monster's in this place. If I ever come face to face with a revenant, I know what steps I'd take. Long ones. What would I do if ever I saw a Necrotor? Hope it didn't see me. Actually, folks, I'm up here for a good reason. A jester's ambition is to be healthy, wealthy, and wisecracking. If it weren't for my friend the hero over there, I couldn't make a hyena laugh. So, when you've lost your wit, broken your funny bone, and none of your puns are fun, it helps to have a hero handy. You know, that reminds me very little of the story about the gravedigger who was so bored, he buried himself in his work. You know, I could tell you some more jokes, but you'd only laugh at them. So long and be good. If you can't be good, then be careful. The gnome takes a deep bow and gets down off the stage. That's funny, you always thought he got down off a duck. Ha! Ah, the townspeople explode into spontaneous applause. Well... Keep smiling, it makes people wonder what you've been up to. So, was that funny or are you just keeping your mouth shut? I'm glad they had fun. I didn't find it that funny, but okay. The gnome was very odd and said very strange things. Yet, Mr. Bones was very funny this time. And I enjoyed listening to him. Well, if you're happy, I'm happy. There will be no more entertainment acts at this hotel. Understood? At least not until a new funny entertainment arrives. <laughs> I think I am sorry to see the strange gnome leave. It was odd being able to laugh again, if only for just a moment. Oh, honey. He's been through a lot of loss. Hi, Crisp. Could you stop working on my keyboard, please? You don't know what to do. You don't want to sit down, but you don't want to leave. You, you want to chew on my cords. You know, he wasn't such a bad person once you got to know him. Yeah, except for that drooling problem, we'd welcome him in Moldavia if he ever came back. I still wouldn't let him marry my daughter, though. You don't have a daughter. Well, that might constitute a major obstacle to marrying her. <laughs> See, that was... <laughs> that was funnier to me than anything the gnome said. Gentlemen, I was dangerously close to being amused this evening. Oh, Taya, I had a great time, a great time! Laughed so hard I almost lost my lunch. Now that was an evening of, thank goodness, rare entertainment. I was okay. I laughed till I stopped. I'm telling you guys, it was boffo. I even got some of the jokes. <laughs> Very happy for you all. It's good to have my wit about me again. Nothing worse than someone who can't take a joke or one that tries to tell one and can't. Before you helped me, when I told a joke, people always clapped their hands. Unfortunately, it was always over their ears. Now, whenever I tell a joke, I get carried away. So I'm leaving before they ride me out of town on a nail. <laughs> a short joke there. Looks like the, they added some lines after the... Maybe the voice actor had to leave for some reason, so they got the narrator to do it. Did you hear the one about the dwarf who is so dumb, he always stops to think and then forgets to start again? Everything that's said to him goes in one ear and out the other. There's nothing there to block traffic. I can tell dwarf jokes all day, mainly because there are none around to stop me. I feel like the dwarf jokes would have been funnier or at least relevant if we'd even seen a fantasy dwarf in this series up to this point. 
I, I assume he's talking about fantasy dwarfs since he's a fantasy gnome and not like just small people because jokes about small people aren't funny. Um, or at least not these kinds of jokes. So again, I assume he's talking about a fantasy dwarf, but we've never seen one or interacted with one or even heard about one. Have we? I don't think so. So it's like, uh, ha ha. Apparently there's a gnome dwarf rivalry we're unaware of. I don't know. It falls flat for me. In another minute, I'm going to say my bye-bye and fly. I'm going south for the winter, down where the nights are balmy, and so am I. Heading for Silmaria, land of winter waterland, where there's no snow nor cold wind to blow. Up here, the winter is so cold, even the wind howls about it. Okay, then. I will say goodbye. Your voice is lost in the noise of the crowd, and the gnome doesn't seem to have heard you. You never. And we're coming right well, back in. It's so long, it's been nice to know you. I like you. I have no taste, but I like you. If you ever make it to Silmaria, look me up. I never forget a friend, especially if he owes me money. Oh, good. But seeing as how it's me that owes you one, I'd better get while the going's good. See ya. And don't take any wooden kopecks. He's going to be in Silmaria. So, everyone, I'll leave you with this story. A man runs up to his doctor and says, Doc, you gotta help me. I keep thinking I'm a goat. The doctor asked, how long have you had this delusion? The guy replied, ever since I was a kid. But da boom That just goats to show you I'm one bad dude. It's been sheer pleasure here, but I'm gonna take it on the lamb and just bleed it. Be seeing you. Okay. <laughs> Yay, he's a recurring character. It would have been a shame to lose him. <laughs> I don't know. I just... Maybe maybe he's hilarious to everyone except me. Crisp, you cannot chew on my cords. I need these cords. This is a very important microphone. Okay. Um... Oh yes, we need to go back in for dinner. You dinner, 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 dinner. Tonight for your dining pleasure, it is the traditional Moldavian chicken paprikash, delicately seasoned with locally grown paprika and garlic. No, that's more cords. This is why you guys aren't allowed into the computer room whenever I'm not in here. Because you are, it's not good. No, no, no. And it's not your fault. They're delicate and chewy and exactly the right size for kitten mouths. Same uh, conversation options as before. That's a little frustrating. Everyone else got bunches of conversation options. Why doesn't Bella get more? Okay. You've Outside never seen we go again. It is very dangerous in Mardavia at night. We always keep things locked up when it gets dark. I will let you out for now. If you wish to return later this evening, just knock on the door. If you'd I think it's actually night now, so we don't need to rest in order to make night come. Let's go see if Katrina came to visit us. Won't she the find us so heroic? Let's just levitate over. That's prettier than... Oh, she's not there. I really thought she would be by now. I wonder if it's another timing bug where we didn't do something at a certain time. Or... Not at the castle. Actually, I have an idea. But, um... Let's 
go do a couple other things first. There are there are the fairies to try to talk to. If we could make contact with them. Especially since it seems like maybe they're important if the Lishi cares about them. He's been a good source of hints for what to do next. Now that's interesting. A glowing magical star floats above the clearing. All right, so first and foremost, we're going to throw down some protection spells again because I don't really trust them. You cast the protect. This is the hide spell that Baba Yaga gave us. Very cool. You cast reversal. You cast aura. All right, detect. You are definitely feeling something magical in this glade, but you can't seem to pinpoint the source. That's irritating. Apparently, they can hide their magical signatures. Can we fetch the staff? Hi. Hello. Hi. You have been tempted by a mere illusion, but there is a true staff in Mordavia, the Staff of Arana. Before the staff may be claimed, there must be a sacrifice made. One life for that of another. You must bring about that sacrifice. Once you have completed the sacrifice, you will need to perform the Ritual of Release, which you can use to free the staff from its confinement. I will teach you this ritual. In return, you must come back here when you have Irana's staff. You are suddenly filled with the knowledge of the Ritual of Release, a spell of breaking magical bonds. <laughs> and they knocked us over. Okay. Interesting. She didn't say why she wanted it, just that she wants us to bring Irana's staff back. Uh, what's that? You are near the your The ground bears a rich carpet of four. You are near You are near You are near You are near can't look your at whatever that is. But based on what we know about the creatures in the area that look like a revenant, uh You find some copper copex on the no longer undead. A former human, a dead human, an undead human, who has been drained by a vampire without being given the gift of the vampire's blood. Which would make them into a vampire. Alrighty, let's go this way. You feel a chill? It's another wraith. The chip. Kill it, 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 kill it. Kill it. Dead. The wraith. Whew. The barrow contains. You find a suit of plate mail armor. A pearl encrusted goblet and 25 gold crowns. Wow. Can we actually, uh. Can we actually use that armor or is that, uh. Yeah. The plate mail armor consists of sections of metal plates welded to flexible chain links for superior protection. You wear leather padding underneath the armor, so we basically combine the armor. That's nice. That's nice. And we're gonna go ahead and let's see. 
What time is it? Let's head back to town. This is the Lishi's great glaive, but he doesn't appear at night. We're just south of the graveyard right now. There was a wraith here, but we cleared it out. And now we're south of town. Your reversals. That's fine. Your reverse. Let's climb over the gate. You dead. And let's go back to the inn and go to bed. You. Uh or at least we're going to try it. Yes, I was you hoping awaken? for that. No dreams, but there is a letter. Someone has left a note for you on the chest. You have no idea how they could have put it there without awakening you. The note reads, Please meet me tonight outside the town gates. I will be waiting. It's signed, Your friend Katrina. All right. So she doesn't appear again without the note, would be my guess. It's sausage and peppers fried with garlic. Any new comments? Nope. You do not need to go looking for trouble. It will always find you. Please take care. Okay. So we don't have anything to do until night. Actually, that's not true. That's not true at all. We could go talk to the Lishi. You comfortable? I've been holding Crisp against my chest with one hand for like 20 minutes. Yeah, most of this video. 10, 20 minutes. You just want the laptop. You're my cuddle boy. Yeah. My little cuddle bunny. Let's go see the Lishi. Lishi, Lishi, Lishi. Na, 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 na. Bush. Oops! Hi there! Hi there, Lishi. Nine and eight make seventeen. Watch out for the Fairy Queen! Locked by magic, pale of cheek, what is it that the fairies seek? I'm almost out of riddles. I'll ask you nothing more, but come back in a while just to see what I've in store. That is the last leashy riddle. Yes, it is. And what does he have in store? Gotcha! 
Leashy Leashy, riddle's done. Thank you much for all the fun. <laughs> I'm happy you're happy. Bless him. All right. So the Leashy is very happy. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill... We're going to wait until nightfall. And we're going to confront the last wraith on my map. That is not the last wraith in the game. Uh. There are others. Uh. But it is the last wraith that you can encounter uh. randomly wandering uh. around the forest looking for piles. Time yet? Not quite. Up. Not quite. Up. All right. We're gonna throw down. Uh, what is that? Is that the ritual release? Yeah. I don't need that. Why would they put it? You come. Put it at the end of the spells. You don't need it. You come. All right, aura and protection in place. It's not quite night yet, so I'm not sure if the wraith will show up, but we'll try. Nope, not quite. Oh, grand. Let's just reload. Seriously, fuck wyverns. Pardon my French. After 30 minutes. Now it's night. And we'll go fight a wraith. You feel it? wanted to make the combat more interesting. The wraith. They could have had different wraiths. The barrow contains treasure. You find a diamond-studded brooch, a healing potion, and 15 gold crown. Okay, nice. Uh, if they really wanted to, to, to mix things up, they could have had different wraiths be like immune to different spells, because there's like four wraiths in the forest. And you have four different attack spells. So you could have each one be immune to different ones. Like one can't be fought by fire and one can't be fought. But, but they're they're vulnerable to the uh, the three other ones. Your protect and then you could have a little bit of, oh no, my flame spell is not working. Or, you know, whatever your go-to is, whether it's lightning or flame or frost or whatever. That could be interesting. Um, as it is, there's really no reason to cast anything but flame in the combat here. Fire works, so you might as well just use it. Hi, Katrina! Hello again. Did you get my note? I hoped I could see and, and speak with you again. I hope you don't think I am too, um, forward? It's just that I don't meet many new people around here. I love to hear about your adventures. Oh, oh, you've been hurt. Are you sure you should be out wandering? You really need to take care of yourself more. Here, let me see if I can make you feel better. I have a potion of healing right here. I hope it will help you. Thank you. That's extremely nice. Um, just gonna save real quick because we had a limited number of talkie options before. It is nice to see you again. There are not a lot of heroes around here, you know. Uh, let's tell her about herself. You tell Katrina more about yourself. He seems to be hanging on every word. Oh, you have seen so many places and people. I love listening to your adventures. 
Should we flirt with her? <laughs> oh, you will make me blush if you keep speaking like that. But I really don't want you to stop. I like listening to you. Oh. So, uh... Hey, we've got all this jewelry. Would you like some jewelry? I don't know what else to do with it. That didn't do any- That did- Nope. So, we've got some options here. Let's ask about magic. Magic is very useful for survival in Mordavia. Use it wisely and carefully. My name is Katrina, remember? I mostly just work in the castle. That's why I can't see you during the day. Someone might notice I am gone. You work at the castle? Are you the master's daughter or, or what's what's going on with that? No one is allowed in the castle unless he is invited. Maybe sometime you will get an invitation? I hope so. I really want to get to know you better. I, please, goodbye. We only got three again. So let's ask about a date. Oh, I do want to see you again, but I'm afraid my parents will get very angry if they know I've met you. Oh, really, I'm not supposed to be out at the castle grounds. She has parents. Plural. So not just a singular master, a singular foreign guest, and a singular daughter. I guess I shouldn't be out at night. It is dangerous, but I do know my way around. It is just that I... I wanted to see you again. No one is allowed in the castle unless he is invited. Maybe sometime you will get an invitation? I hope so. I really want to get to know you better. I must go. Maybe, maybe we can meet again? It, it's too dangerous for me to come here again. It's so far from the castle. Maybe, maybe we could meet by the castle gate some evening. I'll watch for you there. Oh. Please, don't mention me to the gatekeeper. I'll get in trouble if anyone finds out they sneak out of the castle. They, they think it's too dangerous outside the gate. But I need to get out to, to see you again. Goodbye. What if you watch her walk off before you think of doing anything else. What if we already mentioned you to the gatekeeper by accident? He didn't know who she was. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Um, well, bless. Now what? You definitely... We could go get some dinner. We could. We could go get some dinner from Bella. Have we already eaten? No, we can't have because we 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 got. You. We rested in the forest and killed a wraith and then came to meet Katrina. Yes, we get to get dinner. You get a fine meal of roast duckling a la garlic. That sounds delicious, honestly. Not enough is said about how hard her work is keeping everyone fed every night with delicious, yummy meals. Yes, yes, that would be very hard. I have a hard enough time feeding myself and a few cats. Yes. And you guys are you fed You unlock the cans. door to you. Let's see if we get any visions. If we don't, we will go down uh, to the staff and sleep there. No visions, no notes, no dreams. No voices. No voices. You never... We're missing...
missing some content. Um, and it's frustrating because it's all kind of piled up near the the front half of the game. And then you have this long stretch in the middle where nothing happens. Um, but there's it's possible to hear uh, voices in a dream that we missed. And it's also possible to be woken up in the middle of the night at the inn um, because you hear Bella crying downstairs. And if you go down and listen at their door, uh, you hear a conversation between Yuri and Bella. So that's frustrating. You are in this weird and wonderful place once more. This time you remember all the times you've been here before. And despite the beauty, you are afraid. You listen for the voice. It calls out for you. You feel the darkness surround you, and you remember dying. You are overwhelmed with terror, and you remember running away. Your lungs struggle in the agony of no air, and you remember screaming. You are helpless and hopeless, and you remember the eternal loneliness. With all your remaining strength, you reach out to touch the voice. You gradually wake, shaking off the shreds of dreams that cling to your memory. So, the dreams that we get in Irwana's garden and around her staff don't make a lot of sense and they seem to be a little bit repetitive even though things are changing slightly each time. They start with this wonderful beautiful place full of magic and warmth and vitality and you, you touch the earth and flowers spring forth at your touch and then all of that is ripped away from you and replaced with the coldness of death. It's like we're getting multiple perspectives around a single painful event in someone's life and their death. Not sure what's going on there. We'll find out. Uh, I've got eight, got 13, got 10 sandwiches. We have not, I don't think, eaten one of those sandwiches our entire time here because we're, we've been scrupulous about um, eating the days breakfast. are getting cooler and shorter. Winter is approaching. You're still in my arms. Good to see you. Uh, we have already talked to him about all those things. I do not think Olga has anything new to say, and we don't have anything new to buy from her. So we'll sit down for breakfast. It, but it does feel like... Um, Nothing like a good breakfast. It does feel like a lot of the game content was smushed up near the very front week. And then you have a, a week after you that the where door to your room and a lot less to do. And it's like... Could some of this not have been spread out a little bit better? The chest is empty. Yes, I know. I want to put the bones in it. I don't think I need to yep. carry around bones with me. Um, I don't think I need a shopping bag either. Yep. We'll keep everything else. Do 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 do. We don't really have anything to do now, except to, um, wait until night and go see Katrina at the castle. We've done pretty much everything else that we're going to do for the time being. So, let's go. Let's go see Boris, make sure he's alright. Go see Boris and make sure he's all right. He is. He just has no interest in leaving my arms. You are the sweetest, bestest baby. My arm 
is falling asleep. Welcome again. Nothing new to talk about with Boris. Fa so we are just going to rest until uh night. And thank God uh they didn't do any of that nonsense about uh you're too impatient to rest right now. Uh after some our seasoned hero has learned not to be impatient uh and to take rest where it comes and that's kind of a nice touch after too i mean it's it's a it's a fix to an annoying feature that everyone uh hated um but it's it's also in my opinion uh kind of shows some maturity of realizing uh that when you're a hero the rest is few and far between and you take it when it comes so let's go see if Katrina is waiting for us. She is. Hi. Oh, you did come. I was beginning to think I would never see you again. It is so dangerous to wander in Mortavia. I was quite frightened for you. She took off her headscarf and... It was also a chest scarf. And it's 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 hard to have a nice romantic dialogue when there's these horrible necrotars slavering and screaming in the background. I was starting to get a little scared out here by myself. I'm so glad you are here. You make me feel so safe. All right, let's see if restoring fixes the sound. Also, another thing that the Necrotars ruin. <sighs> Seriously, did they not test any of it? be scared out here by myself. I'm so glad you are here. You make me feel so safe. I love hearing stories of your adventures. I've never met a true hero before. Are you flirting with me? Usually it's the other way around. You are very attractive after all. Because, because we're just not going to get those voice lines, apparently. That's frustrating. Okay, so we'll talk to her and probably get three voice, three options again. I know, I freaking know that you can hear these voice lines if we just, I don't know, time it right. It is old, and many of the rooms have been empty for decades. Borkov Castle has been my home for many years now. Oh, it's rather warm tonight, isn't it? My scarf felt too confining. I hope you will excuse the fact I'm not wearing it. I know it is not proper, but I did not think you would mind. You did meet me here and everything. Oh, so much just to see and speak with you again. You are very handsome, you know? And that's all we get for that one, because that was three. You get three questions.
I do know a lot of magic. It has always been a part of my life. Perhaps sometimes I can show you some spells you will never find at wit. Let's try that again. Nope. What about kiss? I'd love to kiss you, but don't think I will just yet. You are far too tempting to resist. All right. So that's, um, let's try this one more time. Please let this work. I really do want you to be able to hear. The voice acting is really good. It has always been a part of my life. Perhaps sometime I can show you some spells you will never find at W.I.T. Oh, she actually spells it out. To kiss you. But I do not think I will just yet. You are far too tempting to resist. But that's your... Okay. Um... I don't know what to ask because we've already asked these. Um, if you ask her how she is, she just basically explains why she's not wearing her scarf. Um. Mm, it is rather warm tonight, isn't it? My scarf felt too confining. I hope you will excuse the fact I'm... I know it is not proper, but I did not think you would mind. Okay. Uh, meet me again, say, three nights in. I will be waiting to see you here. Three nights, jeez Louise. Katrina walks off into the forest to the west and is quickly gone from sight. But we have nothing to do. Except maybe kill those necrotars so they don't show up again. But I don't think... Uh, I don't think that the castle residents would appreciate us killing their guard dogs. Yes. Stretch. That was a big stretch. So let's head over the wall. You did. And get one more... Dream. You are surrounded by warmth and friendship. You reach out to take her hand and smile as she smiles back at you. You hold open your arms and she flows into them. You embrace one another and share your happiness. You both laugh with joy as you each behold the stranger you have known so long this friend that you have never met but always cared for this love that you share for the first time and forever you kiss the lips of the major rana Well, that wasn't a nightmare at all. You gradually wake, shaking off the shreds of dreams that cling to your memory. That was a really lovely dream. Yeah, that was a really lovely dream. So what we're going to do here is we're going to save. And we're going to call that a video because it's been an hour. And when we come back, I reckon we're going to need to um, waste three nights time. And, uh, and then we can meet um, we can meet Katrina again. So we'll think of some things to do. Once again, this has been Quest for Glory 4. My name is Anna Mardal. The kitten in my arms is a little crisp. Yes. He doesn't know it, but he gets to go to the vet in a couple hours. 
for his second round of vaccinations. Yes, he needs vaccinations. Everyone does. Um, so that'll be exciting for everybody involved. Um, thank you for coming along with us. I, I really appreciate it. I do. I love all your comments. I, I, I appreciate each and every one of you who have subscribed. Um, and my God, if you're still deep in this particular playlist, which is, I think, 30 videos long now or however long, 40 videos long, um, you are committed to the, the Quest for Glory playlist. And I really appreciate that too. Thank you so much. Um, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.